Hello, hello. Ron Callis here with another episode of Automation Unplugged. Happy Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. It is uh, Cinco de Mayo, actually. Look at that. So Wednesday, May 5th. Uh, and as I always do, let me jump over to Facebook to make sure we are actually streaming. So uh, bear with me as I refresh my browser to make sure. As uh, my guests will attest, uh, doing these shows live and with this software and when you factor in audio and video and echoes and internet, it's always a bit of a science project uh, getting these shows up and running. And uh, today was no different. But uh, my guest and I, we persevered and uh, we are, we're ready to go. And uh, I want you, if you're out there watching live or if you're watching this in replay, uh, drop down into the comments. I, I see Sean here. What's up, Sean? Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you joining us and uh, always commenting. If you're out there, uh, let me know, let me know where you're coming to us from. So tell us who you are and, and maybe your location. Uh, that's always fun. Also, uh, don't be shy. If you guys are out there and you guys have questions, uh, don't be shy. Drop those questions into the comments. I, I see we have uh, an audience forming here. Appreciate all of you joining the show. This is going to be a fun one. Uh, all right. Sean tells us he's uh, at his home office in Jacksonville. Thank you, Sean. That is good to know. Uh, all right. Uh, what else is going on? Um, you know what? If you are an integrator or a manufacturer, uh, my bet is you've never been busier, maybe in your whole life. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking to uh, folks throughout our industry. I was, uh, I'm was i on the ASEON board, and so I was on my board call, I think it was yesterday, and uh, talking to the manufacturers on that board as well as the dealers. And I think it was unanimous, uh, including for one Firefly, that we are right now riding this tidal wave, this surge of work. And, uh, and folks are at their peak levels of busyness, in, in many cases in the history of their business, uh, which is, uh, it's pretty neat. You know, it's a, a, a lucky roll of the dice for us in the, the construction business, uh, specifically the residential side of the construction business, that are uh, that we're, we're busy. You guys, the integrators, you're all nicely busy. And uh, it definitely puts a smile on my face to know that you guys are, are doing so well. It does not mean it does not come without its own stresses and challenges, because I know that it does. There are problems. They're just different problems. They're the, the good problems, I like to call them. Uh, real quick, we'll get Michael. Michael Restrepo, thank you, sir. You're saying line source. Uh, I think that is you're telling me where you're coming from. I don't know what line source is, Michael. Can, you know, clarify. And uh, Thomas, I know you're coming from Panama. Good luck. Thanks for for joining us, Tomas. All right, so I am bringing you today. This is show 168 of Automation Unplugged. For those that missed the message last uh, last show, uh, April, so last month was actually our four year anniversary of uh, my doing these interviews. And uh, okay, so thank you, Michael. Now I feel like a dummy because Line Source is a new product from Coastal and that's why you're here. So, uh, uh, all right, well that there, the cat's out of the bag. So our guest is Franco. Uh, Desanio, uh, founder and president at Coastal Source. And uh, Franco, I know you're listening. You have to make sure we talk about uh, Line Source uh, because my homework, I should have known what that was. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring Franco in. And uh, he's over here patiently waiting. So let's give him the countdown. Franco, how are you, sir? Doing great, Ron. Thanks for inviting me. You are right, so Franco. What is Line Source? Uh, Michael's Line asking. Line Source is our new state-of-the-art uh, speaker that we uh, we've been working on for a couple of years. Uh, we built about three hundred prototypes. It is now shipping and selling as fast as uh, we can make them. Is this the big one? The really big tower? Yeah, it's big and it's expensive. And big, and it's expensive, big. and it sounds amazing. I've heard That's it. Correct. Yes. Yeah, it sets a whole new benchmark. Uh, 
for outdoor audio and, and even indoor audio. All right. So, uh, Franco, where are you coming to us from? Where, where are you recording from? Fabulous Florida Keys. The Florida. I, I've been there. Is this, I, I've, I visited your, uh, one of your other businesses down in Marathon. Is that where you're at? That's correct. Yep. Awesome. And what's the weather? Let's make uh, maybe our friends in other places jealous. What's the weather like right now? We're in the upper 80s. Upper 80s. Paradise? Yeah. We're starting to warm up very nicely. Yeah, it sounds sounds like it. And for those that are not aware, what is Coastal Source? We are a manufacturer of high-performance outdoor audio and outdoor lighting systems. Got it. And uh, maybe what's the 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 breadth that you sell products throughout the USA throughout the world yeah we have about a thousand dealers um there are throughout the USA some international to be honest we've been so busy uh nationally uh that we prefer doing business in our backyard so we really haven't aggressively gone after the international even though we get a lot of requests uh and we only sell through dealers but yeah it's uh it's been a, a really good ride and uh we're very uh very happy to have you know, the best dealers in the U S that really make all the difference. Awesome. And I'm going to, I'm going to give a few more shout outs here, Franco. We, we, we will hopefully have a, an actively participating audience. Uh, but I've got Shay, she says uh, Oklahoma city, Oklahoma, and she is with coastal source. So I'm thinking Shay is on your team. That's right. Uh, thanks for joining us, Shay. And, and on hell he's with my team. So this is a uh, welcome Franco. He says, saludos from Mexico. Mm -hmm. cool. Awesome. Thank you, Angel. Um, Franco, you and I have known each other. Uh, uh, I, I say that with a lot of my guests, and it's not a requirement that I have to know people. Just I've had people ask me that, like, do they have to know you if they come on the show? But um, and so the answer is no. But when you stick around, as you know, you stick around a long time, you get to meet a lot of people. Yeah. And so I, I've known you uh, since the early 2000s. And uh, I'd love if you would take our audience through kind of your backstory. And it's a, it's a story that goes back to your family in Italy. And I'd, I'd love for you to share that, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. So going way back, uh, my parents moved to, uh, well, my, they got married in Italy. And my mom could come over because uh, parents had mined in the U.S. sending money back to Italy, just like they used to always do in the old country. Uh, so she became a citizen uh, within two weeks after they uh, got married. She moved to Ohio. Uh, father had to wait about three years. But luckily, my uncle was stationed in the Navy in Jacksonville. So he kind of fell in love with Florida and more importantly, the Keys, because they used to stop in Key West. So he convinced my parents that rather than stopping, uh, my dad stopping in, in Ohio, getting stuck in factory work for the rest of their lives, come on down to the Keys. And he, he literally said, you'll starve for a while, but it's, it's going to be nice in the long run, you know. So they basically came to the Keys, uh, you know, right off. My dad got in. Uh, he started working maintenance for estate properties. Uh, that led into people asking him to build concrete walls and other things. So he started a business uh, of cask stone. And me and my brothers, uh, two brothers, uh, older brother and a younger brother, uh, started in that business very early after work, uh, about when I was eight years old. So we've been building things from a very early age, uh, never worked for anyone else. Uh, I got interested in electronics, audio in particular and uh, opened my first store when I was about 18 while I was still going to uh, college for electronics. They're, they're in the Keys? In the Keys, they're actually in the building. So right now we're sitting in the Coastal R&D headquarters where all the design and stuff's done. This was the original sound source store. Uh, so here we are right now was the part of the showroom. Downstairs there was car audio bays. Those are now our bays for uh, salt chamber testing, UV testing, things like that in our workshop. Uh, a couple years after that, I opened another store in Key West. Um, so my background has always been in the company, which has been a, is a family business, uh, outdoor environments. So I was always in charge of our landscaping, pools, hardscape, et cetera, and then all the electronics, automations, entertainment systems. Uh, other brother, Tony, went to school for architecture. So uh, he run our development company, which builds custom homes. And then at for interior design, uh, which we had a design center that was, you know, tile, flooring, furniture, light fixtures. 
Uh, we all did that uh, together, uh, but we all had our own responsibilities. And then right before we met, Ron, as I think you were my Crestron rep, uh, right. we opened our design center, which is right next door here, which is uh, 25,000 square feet. And we're a design build firm that we're architects, we're engineers, we're landscape architects, we're interior designer, we're the GC, we're the integrator. We turn key 100% uh, estate properties. So that knowledge basically of designing and building from scratch uh, very high-end properties and then maintaining them to, for decades is where uh, Coastal really came out of, you know, in that we felt that there wasn't products good enough uh, for our design build firm and for our customers that we started building strictly for our own projects. Uh, and then that led into the product kind of getting out in the market, uh, demand building, and then about 2008, we decided to start selling to others. Got it. The, the, the business that was design source, I remember when I visited you, I remember it pretty vividly because it was, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know what you guys were. Right. You, were you were unlike <laughs> any other business I had ever called on. And, uh, and I, I, I probably said something, you know, naive and dumb, like, you know, along the lines of like, help me understand what you guys yes. are because you were sure. so different than every other technology, you know, contracting type business, you know, integration business that I've, I've ever known. And I think what's so fascinating, and I, I, I want to say, I, I, I'm thinking this carries into the way you approach audio, uh, audio and lighting at Coastal Source. You guys didn't design that business because you had seen it done before. You, no, so to, like, how did you decide to make that business? Because it's incredibly unique. Yeah, so it's definitely an evolution. Okay, so we started literally with cast stone and started as, you know, as we started growing up and, and even in, in our teens, uh, we, and we've tried a lot of businesses, you know, uh, we love living in the Keys, but it's a, it's a challenging market. There's about 70,000 people spread out over 110 miles. And to be honest with you, the, the amount of population that is a good fit for our business is pretty darn small. So when we find the right customers, we're very much about customers for life. And that means doing everything they need. So if we were strictly an architectural firm or an AV integrator, which we had two stores, but, you know, I got to the point where I almost felt that I sold everyone a sound system and, and TV uh, in the keys. So it, it plateaued. So we just kept on adding services. Uh, and since our homes are pretty much all vacation homes, you know, people in most cases love a one-stop shop. And we're literally that. When you come to our design center, you know, everything's there. The kitchens are there, the plumbing's there, the theater's there, the waterfalls, the, you know, so they could come and select everything with our staff of professionals. So the business model works for a, bu a busy business executive that wants a second home. Right. They're not dealing. They're not going to see an architect. They're not going to see an electrician. They're not going to see the plumber. They're not going to see the GC. We handle all those things. So we're fairly, I think, progressive, especially by key standards. And we just started adding departments as we felt was appropriate. Uh, and we just felt that that it's not for everyone because a lot of people, some people like the piecemeal things. You know, we're not that kind of company. But we felt that that true design build, most design build firms are an architect working with a contractor. Uh, as you know, we do it all. We grow, we have our own nurseries. We grow 500 species of palms. Usually when we get into stuff, we get in deep. You know, we, we don't want to do the same stuff that everybody else is doing. Uh, so that's why we end up growing plants because, you know, we used to hire out landscapers that would put the same dozen plants on our beautiful jobs that everybody else got. And we found that our customers would really like to have something special. Uh, so we grow specimens. Uh, we grow very, very particular type of plants. Uh, so we just kept on adding those services um, so that we could continue to grow the business. That's that's amazing. And I, I've got to put uh, uh, Michael, uh, clearly a fan and one of your dealers. He said, Franco is the man uh, up on the screen here. And... He also says R&D at Coastal Source is next level. So uh, talk to me uh, about that, Franco, the approach to, you know, design your own speakers and, and lighting gear 
originally you said you were doing this at Design Source for your clients. And I think you said this, or I, I certainly believe I know this. It's because of the harsh conditions of the keys. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, our design center, we, we represent many manufacturers, including a lot of the audiovisual and enter entertainment and automation that a lot of our, your viewers uh, watch. Uh, so in most cases, you could find very good quality products, but our failure rate on outdoor products was, was we felt was very excessive. And, you know, when you when you build a business, and you build a reputation, customers expect a lot. You know, so we found that we were not um, able to fully meet those expectations. So our first steps were here were to develop the testing procedures to tell our manufacturers what we need. We had no intention on manufacturing or designing things. Uh, we just wanted to do some base level stuff so that our manufacturers could build better products. And basically, we spent a lot of time on it, a lot of testing, white paper, scientific type stuff. Uh, met with our manufacturers, even traveled throughout the U.S. and offshore to meet with manufacturers and kind of heard the same thing over and over again. And that, you know, great idea. We think you're on the right track, but, you know, we're not going to slow down our production lines because that's a niche market. Uh, people throw things away. They don't save their boxes. We're happy with just reselling them products. At that time, we decided, you know what, we're just going to start this ourselves. You know, so uh, as I was mentioning what I think makes us unique, you know, we're we're not going to sit here and say we're smarter than our competitors, you know, those kind of things. Uh, we put a lot of work in, I could tell you that. But our experience of watching and these estate properties, we've done about 1,600 major projects in the Keys, and that's from scratch. Most of those we maintain. So our customers expect us to be able to look at a project and look for problems in it. Most of our customers, I'm going to say, spend two, three, four weeks to maybe three months here. So when they're here, they don't want, um, you know, they don't want their house being painted. They don't want their AV system to be down. And as you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're an expert at it, but you know, just the batteries that go bad drive them crazy, you know? So we have a service for those kind of things. So when we go to a product and, and fortunately we've won state, international and national awards on our projects. And when we look at them, we're not looking at how beautiful they are. We're looking for problems. Uh, and it's our job to find solutions. So I believe over four decades in harsh conditions, outdoors, seeing what happens, also, we've always been from a very early on age designing and building things, be it architectural, cabinetry, whatever it may be, electronics. As I mentioned, I built my first speaker at 13. Uh, so I think it's that. I think it's that um, experience of one, what the customers want. Number two, how does it need to be made to truly last outdoors? Number three, what is it like to install, well, sell number one, because we're, you know, we we have some fantastic customers and there's some tough ones out there. So, you know, we know what it's like to sell. Um, you got to manage your business and your profitability. Uh, so when you're installing systems, there's easy ways to do them. There's hard ways to do them. There's some incredible products that are just too difficult. Uh, reliability is huge. We know what it costs to roll a truck. You know, we know what it costs to have a crew. We know what what a pain it is to be, pull off a very profitable job to go back and fix something. Uh, you know, coastal or design source is not perfect, but we sweat the details and, and we know the pain involved with a lot of these things. So I, I think that's our edge is that experience of the whole picture from, you know, the presenting the product, demoing the product, getting the customers buy in, delivering it, installing it profitably quickly moving on to the next one. Michael is blowing up the chat here, so I can't help but put a general theme. He's 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 loving on your R&D and uh, yeah. the torture testing. Yes. And he, he's even said uh, the fish tank with the power supply. Now that's confidence. Uh, and so, and, and I think this is the this white box here. What is this thing up here on your desk over to your right? No, this one of our amplifiers. Yeah, so, so I think that's a great example of simplification. So we started with amplifiers. So we looked at, you know, what is the uh, typical outdoor install? And that's an amp on the inside, source on the inside, 
drilling through the walls, crawling through the attic, making sure you got room in a rack because the racks are always filled up, as you know, uh, getting outside to the ground and then getting it implemented. So we decided, you know, it'd be a lot easier that our amp lives outside. So we make IP68. Uh, we have a patented cable system. Uh, most of you will that know of Coastal know of it, um, but nobody ever cuts a cable in our systems unless you're having to adapt to somebody else's. So it's an IP68, fully submersible, uh, direct burial cable. We even have them that are armored with stainless steel jackets. Um, so what the idea is, is that you will never be splicing cables, which is the, so going back to that experience, we said, okay, we're gonna get into outdoor lighting on a large scale. Number one failure is underground connections. I mean, there's no question about that. And that's true of low voltage stuff. It's true of high voltage stuff. Connections even true of the transmission lines out on the road. Okay, so connections are your number one problem. So we focus on that right up front, develop the patented system, you know, we've got about 800 SKUs, uh, many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars in tooling. Uh, and what it is, is plug and play can have downsides, compatibility issues, things like that. The reason we have so many SKUs is, again, with that experience, we've thought through, and I think most of our dealers will tell you, that we have those solutions. When a dealer comes up and says, I got this situation, I got that situation. We're all about building truly custom systems with the dealer customizing nothing. It's all plug and play, out of the box, tested, fast, reliable, high performance. So uh, talk to me. You were edging before we went live. You were teaching me, uh, and I'm I'm I know I've heard that Coastal Source is fantastic, but I didn't know a lot about your technology or your approach. And you were describing that in a normal satellite type array that we've all seen outdoor in, in sure. you know, by the pool or in the landscape, yeah. that there's opportunities for uh, say a technician to potentially miswire, misconnect something. And you've you thought of that in advance and you have an answer. Do you mind describing that? Sure, uh, again, that's what we look for. We look for, you know what? So building great products is only part of the story. If they're not easy to install. If they're easy to mess up, make mistakes, it reflects on us. Dealer doesn't have a good experience. Owner doesn't have a good experience. We don't have a good experience. So we're all about simplicity and eliminating variables. We want the stuff to go in the same time every time. So our connectors, as I mentioned, you know, they're, they're IP68, they're gold plated, they're twisted pairs, they're tin plated conductors. So even if the get jackets gets nicked, so there's a lot of technology that goes into our basic cables. So from a performance standpoint, you know, it's easy to say that I can just run 16.2 and I make my connections and everything's great. Well, there's no comparison, fidelity and performance. But to your point, when a technician's out there working in the dirt and he's got eight satellites and he's got a couple subwoofers, he's got his amplifier, you know, they're out there and it's kind of sweaty and they're using silicone wire nuts, which are messy. Well, as soon as they take a positive and negative and swap those two, just get them wrong, uh, you have one speaker pressurizing the area, one size depressurizing the area. It's out of phase. We immediately lose bass response, okay? You, that just can't happen with our system. Uh, the line source was brought up by Michael. So you take a system, generally what most contractors do, not all, will take a four conductor cable, they'll run it to the full, they'll cut into it, tap off the first speaker, then jump to the next one, tap off, okay? The amount of connections can be staggering, and each one of those is a weak point, okay? So currently, we go from our amplifier to our speakers, has a Y cable on it, and then it goes out to the next speaker. Many of our systems are bi-amplified or tri-amplified and almost always stereo. A lot of people believe in mono, a lot of people believe in small satellites and one subwoofer, we don't. Okay, uh, we do a lot. When you of say you don't, things. is it you just don't think it sounds as good as as yeah. the alternative? Exactly. So we, you know, along with this facility next door, we have a sound garden with about fifteen systems, our systems and our competitor systems. Michael's reason Michael's <laughs> Michael's been to our training down here, so okay. he knows okay. all this stuff. So we have very in depth trainings. Uh, we also have, I have a whole spare lot at my house with a nice tiki and it's all wired and, and we do large scale systems. So 
we're not, we, we rely a lot on textbook technology, but we're much more uh, rely on real world conditions. So we started with some of our basic systems in mono, okay? But we implemented them. And luckily with Design Source right next door, not only are we implementing them in a test system, we're implementing them on properties throughout the keys on a regular basis. Uh, and we take all the information and you know, everything is a compromise. There's no perfect thing out there. But we find that the theory of I'm closer to one speaker, I'm moving around, so it should be mono, uh, just doesn't hold up in real world applications. The fidelity, the sound stage. So I think when people, you know, there's a lot of good systems out there. Okay, they play reasonably full range, and you know, they're for a lot of people they're just fine. When most people listen to a coastal source system, they hear something different. You know, they hear sound stage, they hear true stereo separation, they hear true full frequency response from each speaker, not as you walk away from the sub, things start, you know, thinning out. And that doesn't take that far. Uh, so it's those things that make things sound more like music that we sweat the details on. And it becomes from that amplifier, the connections, the speakers, by amplifying, tri amplifying, you know, a lot of our stuff is very similar to true pro audio systems. And what I was gonna get to is, so right now you may have to run three of our cables, a left channel, a right channel, and a subwoofer. The new line source, and we'll see this migrate, is a single cable. Comes out of the amp, goes to any speaker, subwoofer, satellite, left or right, in and out, no more Y cables, one cable, and it does it all. You, you can't screw it, like right now, you can plug a satellite into a sub, which is not a good thing. You know, it's like other people's systems. So we continue to simplify that, remove the variables, remove the mistakes, and, and create higher performance. I've just put on the screen here, uh, technology's behaving at the moment. So I was able to bring up your website. Yeah. And uh, I brought up the, the line source. Uh, and I, I want to say my first exposure to this, Tell me if the timing sounds right. This would have been maybe about a year, year and a half ago. I was at a ProSource event yeah. and it was late night. And uh, as I learned uh, when I, I decided to not go to bed early at the show and actually mm -hmm. stay up and, and hang out with, with friends, yeah. they all migrated to the room where your speakers were set up and mm -hmm. they were turned up loud. And just as somebody would do, say, in a two-channel hi-fi uh, right. situation, there was large crowds gathering, listening to your coastal source tower speakers, like for an hour, like at the yeah, end of the so, show, late at night, people were just sitting there listening, drinking their cocktail. Yeah, so we spent, you know, uh, so our three-way speaker, I think put us on, our, on the map. That's what most people are familiar with before the line sources came out. Uh, got about four, we got about four years of developing that. Uh, and it, it, it set the benchmark, I think, performance. Line source is a whole new benchmark. Uh, and there's a lot of things that it has that is very unique. It is a line array, uh, 12 ribbon tweeters, probably first time ribbons have been used outside, uh, six bids and an integrated sub, which we love to do for, for full range sound. But the detail, the sound stage, the dynamic range, the power um, is unrivaled other than a real concert uh, line, line array system. And even that is not gonna be as, uh, let's say audiophile or musical. The other thing that we, what we wanted to do is we wanted the speaker, so people loved our three ways. They played very loud, very musical. Um, and you know, literally, I think you could check it with, every one of our dealers has a demo system. The sale is typically made within seconds of playing them. But people wanted more. And there's, you know, there's people out there, a lot of famous people and other people that have dozens of them in their backyard, but they wanted more. So we wanted high SPL, but systems aren't always played at that volume. So what the line source does, even though it's a big, very powerful speaker, it plays more uniformly throughout a space than any other speaker, including our three ways. So a point source speaker like ours, other speakers and most, um, every doubling of distance lose six decibels of sound. Every three decibels takes you half the power or double the power to recreate. The, our line sources only lose three dB. So in a typical application yeah. where you got a pool, uh, maybe you have a dining area, and then you got across the pool, you have a seating area. 
the line sources can be comfortable to listen to at the dining area within eight feet of them, but still at an adequate volume across the pool. With our three ways and many others, and our three ways is still a fantastic speaker, it's very loud at that dining area to get all the way across the pool. What, what is the difference? I mean, how does what's the science behind that? that okay, so a point source radiates sound in a sphere, okay? So low frequencies, and I'll I can tell you about some really cool low frequency technology after this called Sub-Zero, but if you take a point source speaker, low frequencies, no matter what type of speaker it is, it's 360 degrees. As we come up in frequency to the very highest, it starts getting directional, okay? But you could take that, there's a lot of parallels between our lighting and our audio. If you take a typical lamp, okay, an Edison base lamp bulb, okay, it's a 360 degree sphere device, okay? Mm -hmm. Works very good for illuminating an area close to it, okay? Mm -hmm. If you take like our landscape lights and LEDs in general, they're directional, okay? They're not 360, but they go a long distance, okay? Mm -hmm. So a point source, if that point source is producing sound down, up, behind it, depending on the frequency, but a very broad area, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a sphere coming out as you as a sound pressure wave. A line source develops a cylinder of sound. Okay, so it's very focused. Now, we worked very hard to get it. We, we have what's called a variable waveguide so that our line source performs in a very wide uh, sound dispersion if you're close to it. If you're a midways away, it's got a, a mid-range uh, uh, throw distance. And then the bottom, which is very narrow, is a long throw distance. So we had to do some tricks because a line source isn't a perfect fit for everything. But basically what we're doing is we're taking the sound and focusing where the people are. Okay, uh, ground level typically, you know, we do, uh, the, the treaters do arc at the top. So even if you're on a second floor, that works pretty well. So basically what we're doing is we're taking a lot of the waste of the sound away uh. and directing it where it's useful. And we can do that in a much more uniform fashion. Got it. That, that makes sense. So you, you look at the space and you look at where the, the humans are going to be in that space, not the space at large. You don't need to... Send Correct. sound pressure to the trees if there's no people over there. Correct. The chipmunks don't need to hear the music. The people want to hear the music. Yeah. And that technology, that line technology helps, uh, is is the best way or one of the better technologies. Correct. To do that. I think that's how we look at things. We don't normally look at something. Um, and, and I'll tell you that um, the development of the line source was a very interesting project in that we work with some great manufacturers and you know that you really know their stuff generally our designs are a little unconventional and i would even say vary or deviate from textbooks sometimes okay uh in ways that we find are practical and better suited to the task hmm. sometimes what we get back is no 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 you don't do it that way you know, um, so a, a funny story, we were gonna introduce the line sources, um, probably it would be three years ago, uh, CDA, and our prototypes came back very different than how we had designed them. And it was it didn't have the variable waveguide. It really was meant for medium and long distance. So we were trying to figure out how in the CDA booth we can keep people at least 12 feet away, because they didn't sound where the dam within 12 feet. I see. Okay. And we went through years of working on those to finally get it back to what our original design was, convincing acoustic consultants and engineers, et cetera, we have those on staff also, um, of what we're trying to accomplish. And it went very roundabout, but I would tell you, if you, we have pictures of them here, if you come and look at what our conceptual design was about four years ago, and where we are now, we we're probably 90 or 95% of it. But we went through this route of disproving textbook technology to get where we needed to get to. There's a theme there that your business design source is is unlike any other business. Your your speakers, if everyone looks out at the marketplace at outdoor speakers, the answer for the marketplace is there's satellites and there are buried subs. And then there's coastal source. And your stuff is so fundamentally different. And it it I mean, it, what to me, it, it strikes me as it's really that entrepreneur, the fact that you've never worked for anyone other than yourself and your family, 
that you're just not looking at how others are doing it. You're just saying what's best for the task. And to be honest, we don't get, um, I don't think we get much um, passion or enjoyment. We, 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 we just don't copy. We're not, we're just not interested in it. You know, um, this is a business, uh, as you know, you know, we, we come from, uh, there's two family businesses that own Coastal. Uh, they're both successful business, hardworking, ethical families. Um, Coastal's probably being built for the next generation is more than it is for us. Uh, so we're not, you know, a, a business has to be profitable to grow, to be able to support our dealers. All that. So I'm not trying to say we don't want to be profitable. We do. And, and we want to grow. We want to do all those things. But we're we're not about numbers and producing me too products. Um, so we, we're trying to be very careful, though, in that we don't want to be different just to be different. We truly want to be different if it's superior. Yeah, no, I I, I love that about you guys, and it, it definitely shows. I, I want to touch on a couple of other topics here, Franco. And I, actually, what you just mentioned that the business is owned by two families, and so I want to talk about family just for a yeah. minute. And and you guys are a family business, and you you and your brothers are the second generation. And you told me something I thought was super neat, which is you actually have the next generation also working in the company or in the companies. Can you Correct. Yeah, yeah, describe there's seven, that? There's seven of, we call them G3, generation three working in the company. And are they working in coastal source or across so the different coastal family source, companies? Um, you know, kind of, I would say part-time, my two sons, one's an engineer and an architect and one's a landscape architect. They're involved with our conceptuals, uh, they're involved with, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the crazy idea guy. So they usually get the first shot at me uh, of telling me how bad some of the ideas are, you know, till we, till we actually put them in practice. Uh, so they're very involved. And, you know, with me, I migrated from the design source uh, starting in 2003. Uh, 2008, I was probably 50%. 2010, I've probably been 80% coastal or so. So to be honest with you, I'm getting a little removed from the market. And I, that's very that's very dangerous, let's say almost. You know, sure. I think our strengths are, you know, I, I've literally made tens of thousands of connections. I've dug the holes. I've poured the concrete. I've climbed up the trees. I mean, I did 50 trees at Disney, you know, at 3 a.m. in the morning to, to 6 a.m. You were the day. guy on the ladder. Uh, man lift, luckily. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> okay. it's those things. And, you know, it's really interesting. As the company grows, I... I I try to hang on to a lot of that stuff because I know if I'm in my little R and D area here, and I'm very fortunate, I have three of them, um, which keep me entertained. Uh, if I start getting too far away from what's really happening with our dealers, really happening in the field, uh, I don't think we're going to be the same company. So between my sons and obviously, so you know, within 50 feet of where I am right now, we have 80 people working at Design Source. I'm very, you know, even though I'm not doing that every day, I'm very in tune. And obviously I still hear about the problems. I still hear about the challenges. Uh, so yeah, so they participate very much from that standpoint. Uh, but yeah, all pretty much all our business, our nursery, our uh, design source and coastal, uh, it's all a family affair. And I, and I have to say what makes us stand out from the crowd in addition is our staff. I mean, I don't care how smart you are, how good your products are, we're only as good as our people. And we're very proud of our people. I think we try and treat them very well and make them part of the team. Uh, but, you know, I'm I'm a single person. And, and, and as you probably know from some of the technology challenges we had, I think those are post, mostly on your end. But uh, yeah, you know, he's referring I'm, to I'm my little... early days at Crestron, 03, <laughs> I... 04, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know. TPMC 10, anybody? Any, anybody get chills? <laughs> yes. So I'm, a, you know, I'm a little old school in some ways, to be honest with you. Um, very, I would say I'm quite technically advanced on the things that Coastal does. I'm, I'm kind of like the head engineer. Uh, but I let other people do a lot of things that I'm just not as good at, you know. Yeah. Uh, so our support team, our sales team, our shipping team, uh, and as I mentioned, I don't care how good our products are. Best case scenario, that's half the battle. Talk you to know? me, Franco, talk to me yeah. about the pivot to lighting. And this may not be a pivot. It may have been there from day one. Yeah. Um, 
you know, when I think coastal source, I think as audio first, but now I'm seeing more and more dealers are buying and installing lighting, making yeah. lighting, outdoor lighting specifically a part of their business. Um, what What is the opportunity there? Maybe let's start there for those that are listening. What is the opportunity it really twofold with the outdoors yeah. and with outdoor lighting? Okay, so let's go back a little bit because it's interesting of your perception. So I've been in audio all my life. Uh, us and our partners decided, well, I was always pushing for audio. We decided to start when Coastal went national, we started with lighting, okay? And some, you know, I know a lot of people in the industry like you do. Uh, one of our top reps, LP Hench, Mike Hench, uh, when I approached him and I showed him some of our Coastal audio, was Franco, listen, there's a thousand speakers out there. Do not get in this business. Uh, competitive, it's all the same. So a lot of people said, no, 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 no. So we actually started with lighting uh, for about the first three years. And then audio came in, you know, uh, after that. So it's interesting that the perception, and I think that's kind of the CDA group perception. Yeah. And also our audio has a pretty loud voice, you know. Uh, my booth has been next to yours a few times. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, so it's interesting of that perception. So let's go back to lighting. So um, lighting was first. Uh, because we felt that there was a bigger opportunities for integrators to increase their business, expand their business. Uh, as you know, you know, we've been hearing that automation is, is going to be a dying breed at some day. It's amazing how it's hanging in there. But I do think that integrators must diversify in some ways. Okay. So outdoor lighting um, offers a huge bang for the buck done properly. Now, a lot of integrators are concerned. What do I know about lighting? What do I know about trees? What do I know about outdoor environments? A lot of my techs don't want to work outside, you know? So there's a lot of negatives out there that we tried to address uh, based on very simple systems, very predictable, very high level of education and training. Uh, but the opportunities are huge. Uh, one of the things I'll tell you is right now with design source, obviously you mentioned business is very good. We're booked 18 months, two years on design build projects. Yeah. When we weigh a new lead that comes in, and you know, we're, we're very fortunate to be selective. Obviously, you need to be very careful of who you say no to and, and how you do that. Okay. Uh, so we try and treat everyone well. And, you know, uh, but we have to, you know, for the business sake, we have to select. You can't it. say yes to everybody. It's just exactly. not possible. We Definitely learned, not know, possible today. We learned a lot of things early in life, very early. One is no is a very powerful word. It takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of time, but no is sometimes the best decision. And we've said yes. no to some big jobs. Um, so on the lighting aspect, the jobs can be, the average job and the large jobs can be bigger than audio. Now our audio systems can get very big, but as I was mentioning, I'm gonna say that integrators at least let's call it a half a time, a dozen a month. We'll do lighting jobs in the hundred to three hundred thousand dollars outside with our product. Okay. Wow. And if you look at that job and the resources it takes, what it takes to sell it, what it takes to install it, we believe the throughput, the dollars per day that you are earning with a fairly small, not programmer level staff. Okay. Uh, is some of the highest return on investments you could ever do. So when we weigh those leads at Design Source, we will weigh a outdoor environment job. Now it's not. I'm just talking. Not just talking lighting and audio. I'm talking pools, landscaping, trellises, arbors, outdoor stuff. We'll weigh that about three to one over a remodel job or another type of interior mm. job, because we know that inside everything is much more demanding. It's much more critical. Uh, you know, on a positive note, integrators are getting immersed into interior lighting, okay, which is a very smart thing. But you've got to compete with the electricians who have been doing it forever, very small margins generally. We're selling a higher end product. We've got the interior designer involved. We've got the contractor involved. We've got the project manager involved. We've got the owner involved. Then we've got the mechanics of the trusses, the air conditioning system, all that stuff. Everything's got to be symmetrical, okay? So working in that environment, uh, is very challenging versus our outdoor environment. So Coastal strictly focused on the outdoors because if you're implementing an out, a lighting system and you want to move something, it's minutes. And our system is 
much faster than anyone else's. Uh, as I mentioned also, you know, we're very familiar with, and all our dealers are, Christmas is coming. The house is overdue. We're moving in by Christmas. Huh. Trades are working on top of each other. There's a lot of stress. It's super dusty in the environment. You're trying to install your rack. And all you got all the guys outside, you know, no, hardly no pressure. Everybody's focused on the inside. Uh, and even if, if it doesn't get done with our systems, you will get done on time. But even if it doesn't get done, it's a whole different dynamic. So the complexity is a fraction. Uh, profitability in is our studies is considerably higher. Uh, anxiety level is much lower. Uh, so that's why we focus on the outdoors. We just think there's so much opportunity for integrators we're in, we're more interested in a progressive business person than we are someone who's highly technical mm -hmm. because we've built the business we we believe to be a great partner for someone who wants to grow their business remain on the cutting edge of what we do but do it profitably and not pull your hair out at night when things aren't working and things like that. So kind of, again, a different mindset on what we think business should be for our integrators. Well, I'm curious out of the, the population of integrators, uh, I'll just be broad. I'll say, you, it sounds like you focus on North America primarily. Correct. Um, what, what percentage of those folks do you think have that focus on the outdoors, lighting and music? You know, I assume Man. our 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 dealers are heavily biased towards that. So I don't know if I'm, so we have a thousand dealers. Um, obviously, the usual situation where you've got your very active ones and your less active ones. Sure. Um, so I, you know, I would say in most cases our dealers get it. You know, now they don't always get lighting or they don't always get out their audio. Most yeah. of our dealers sell both, and you know, it's a pretty powerful package when you are out there doing both. Um, but I would say there's more of an obstacle in lighting because of that uh, lack of confidence. In other okay. words, I'm going to be embarrassed because I don't know what the trees are. Uh, my techs do not like digging ditches. Now, since we've been through all this for decades, we have the answers. You know? Well, so let, let me ask. Yeah. So you said trees. That, that you're yeah. talking landscape design. And Correct. so that, to me, immediately walks into lighting design. Correct. And an integrator may or may not have a lighting designer on staff or in their portfolio, what's the answer to that? Because to make a lighting sale, I need sure. the specification, which means I need someone that understands lighting. Correct. So we have a full design staff. So we literally will take now garbage in garbage out. Right. So, but we have a very um, solid procedure of the things that an integrator needs to do on the job. Okay. Photos, basic information. What is your customer looking at? Obviously the budget question, which you all know is, is valuable sometimes and completely useless other times. Uh, but we have to gather this information and um, we produce full sets of plans, which are the layout, the type of fixtures, the engineering, the wiring, uh, the whole gamut. And it's a presentation series, okay? So it's meant for you. Uh, what we're all about is <laughs> we're all about seriously standing out for the competition, including our dealers. Okay. When our dealers go into a demo or a presentation, we want them to be so armed and ready that the competition really doesn't have a chance. Okay. So now you have to do some work. Uh, our trainings are very important. We have a lot of online product trainings, but we truly believe if you know our product well enough, if you, take the support that we have available, you're going to be super hard to beat unless that, that, that customer is just not in that price range. You know, we can't be, we can't be trying to sell coastal to somebody who wants to spend $50 a fixture. But if that customer is in the proper category, the close rate should be extremely high because people, your competitors in most cases on landscape lighting, and I would say in, in audio in a lot of cases, are not going to be armed with that presentation, uh, all the, the the way it's been thought out, and then also that that goes into your implementation. You've got this plan, and you know it's just a matter of plugging these things in literally within minutes. Uh, and then you need someone who knows a little bit about layout and things, so that when they're aiming the lights and stuff like that. But that's what Coastal is about. Coastal is about a turnkey opportunity for our dealers. 
um, with really no stones left unturned. Now, if you only do part of it, maybe you'll be partly successful. A lot of people, after they've done our design services for a number of times, can just run with it. They no longer need the design service. They don't need the hand-holding. Uh, but it's all there for people that, that need that uh, in the beginning. And some people use it forever. Got it. So the, the, to stay on lighting, the design services, that's a service they can additionally hire Coastal Source for to provide. And it, it, there's like a wholesale and a retail value on that. Or is that how that works? Uh, you know, it, 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 so, you know, just like a lot of companies, we have uh, kind of dealer, uh, you know, tiers or something like tiers, that, all that kind of stuff. So it goes from a fee to a free service, uh, especially if you close the job. You know, what we can't, so these designs take time and we're adding to our design staff. Um, so we can't have, you know, we've had issues where people will go out to a home show and really not qualify people. And we're doing design after design for unqualified people. You know, yeah. our, our business mantra is we want to support, obviously the dealers support us. And if you're putting the work in, we'll put the work in. And you know, we're not, we're not about charging fees. Okay. Uh, it's there to discourage misuse. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, we want you to get your design. We want you to make your sale and we want it to be extremely profitable. Got it. Um, I'm curious about the maybe a little bit more of the engineering and, and uh, of the lighting control and how that ties into, say, a control system. So if there's a, a Lutron system on the project or a, yeah. a Control 4 or Crestron or Vantage sure. or whatever that is, how does the outdoor lighting tie into that? It could tie into a number of ways. And, you know, again, I think a lot of integrators like to control everything to the nth degree. So you could dim our systems. So you could take and, you know, there is a recommended list that we have of dimmers that are you know, work with our system. You know, it's a little different than indoors, though. So mm -hmm. what happens if you get too carried away with it is you have voltage drop to deal with. All right. So indoors were high voltage almost always not there, there are some low voltage systems and the distances aren't necessarily as great as they can be outdoors so when you want to dim a system we recommend that you do it in a zone you know they've got an outdoor dining area etc so we've got all the information on that if you want to dim it in most cases um the lights are lamped properly between color temperature power beam angle all those things affect the light, okay? So I'm going to say that we get asked about dimming a lot, but I'm going to tell you that one-tenth, one-one-hundredth of a percent actually get implemented, okay? Because most people want it to come on and go off. So we've got everything from basic photo cell and timers to you can control our transformers from relays, from dimmers, from uh, switched outlets, that kind of thing. So it's really a matter of how much control do you want? And kind of like I mentioned with outdoor amps is, you know, really funny stories. When we came out with outdoor amps. Many of our dealers said, why are you doing that? I, my, my electronics do not go outside. They go in my rack. Okay. So we had outdoor amps in the beginning, uh, a few years later, and it took us a long time to develop uh, amplifiers that we can call coastal quality. That's we we kind of have a minimum standard that we feel should be a coastal product. So that took a number of years. When we came out with those amps, the same dealers that said, "Why would you do outdoor amps?" are like, "Why are you doing indoor amps now?" Because they got spoiled. Okay, so simplicity. So yes, I could put it in my rack. I can integrate it. I can do all these things, or I could take my coastal amp with a wireless streamer of many types we make enclosures for them so they can go outside and i can just plug it into an outlet and play or we'll take ballon in we'll take line level in we'll take all these things that just simplify the job okay and the same thing i think is true for lighting so yes do we have some dealers to get very advanced in things with control yes is that the standard by no means most of our dealers love getting the job designed right implementing it right and their people enjoying it with the minimal of complexity. So it's common in a lighting system, a coastal source lighting system, that that system is turnkey timers. It goes on and off at the right time. And it is not necessarily 
tied into the the home control system. It's not Correct. required. I mean, I, I'm going to say a good number are tied into the control systems. Okay. Uh, but no, I mean, if, if I had to say, I'd say it's 20% are controlled by systems and 80% are not. Got it. No, that, that's great. All right, we got a question here from a Canadian dealer. He says, how can Canadian integrators get access to these products? We have an importer, Coastal Source Canada. So they are in Toronto. Uh, so you can go to our website uh, or you can call our customer service. But yeah, we have a uh, distributor importer in Canada. Got it. And then uh, we have a comment here from Michael. He says, the Coastal guys represent an amazing product which makes it easy for me to sell to the end user. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that, does it, Franco? Uh, that's like, like I said, I, to be successful, you know, I think you need a complete package. And that's what we're about. We're not just about, um, you know, there's some great products out there that never get off the floor. I'm just genius products from other manufacturers or, you know, so yeah, we spend a lot of time on R&D, uh, but we try and spend a lot of time on the other things that maybe are not as uh, addressed by manufacturers. Uh, and there are, you know, listen, there's great competitors out there. There's great programs out there. There's there's manufacturers that have services similar to us. Uh, so there's some great companies out there. Don't, don't get me wrong. But we want to <laughs> we want to focus on what we think is important. Uh, those of us that have been in the industry, you know, I, I like to say we really don't need practice anymore. Right, that customer says, "Hey, give me a great deal, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you do a bunch more, or you know, you got to cut your margins, or whatever it is." You know, especially in these good times, we need to be focused on things that are profitable, enjoyable. You know, tap our resources as minimally as possible. Uh, allow us to maintain our lifestyle. You know, I mean, all of us. I think most of us in the industry are workaholics, so that's a that's a limited amount. But, you know, there's businesses that can run fairly smoothly or business divisions that can run. And we have a lot of business divisions. So, you know, we look at those, um, you know, there's a quality of life aspect uh, that sometimes we're our own enemies because we're trying to do things because we want to. Sometimes we force customers into them because they think they should have them. Uh, so again, uh, we're we're looking for that balance um, that is hard to find, but I think there's a number of tools there um, that can allow our dealers to enjoy more of those things. Two quick, two last questions for yep. you, uh, and I, I know I saw the comment. Uh, I'm just trying to scan here and find it. It was from Michael, and he had made a comment. Um, uh, I'm not seeing it here immediately. Uh, but let's just talk demo. So let's say you have dealers, you have a thousand dealers. What is the demo gear that you guys have available for them for lighting and for audio? And sure. um, do they buy that or like, can you, what can you describe about the demo capabilities you empower your dealers with? Yeah. So one, we feel demos are critical, especially in the beginning. Now we all know there's dealers out there um, that really don't need to demo anything because their customers buy whatever they do and, and they've got relationships and things like that. Um, but we believe the demos are extremely powerful, especially when you're selling at a price point like we sell at. So we have lighting systems um, and what we make is what's called a bucket kit, but it's basically a kit that has everything in it where you can go and connect up within 15 minutes, 20 minutes, about a dozen fixtures. You do the customer's entry, maybe you do around their pool or you do a feature tree or whatever it may be. You go and you set it up there today, you put it on a timer, comes on at night. Good idea to go back and visit that customer at night, move some things if they want, get it while they're excited. Uh, and then you tell them it's gonna take it away and they usually don't want it to take it away and they want you to add a lot more. So seeing is believing. A little bit of a downside on lighting demos is, is there's some work at night. Now, generally, it's just that meeting with the client. Uh, audio systems, we have those from $1,000 on up. And again, based on our plug and play system, they are extremely quick to set up and, and very predictable. You know, you don't, you don't have all these connections and stuff you're dealing with. Um, and those are just, I mean, close rate on a properly done audio system is a minimum 95%. And that's, you know, in most cases, that could be many thousands of dollars, but it take a, uh, probably the number one demo that our customers get is a three, our dealers get is a three-way demo. That retails for in the 10 grand range. And, you know, 
most we do not recommend in that one that you ask your customers up front for price, budget, et cetera. You just play it. Okay. And most people think you're going to get a couple speakers on the wall, or maybe they're going to get a couple landscape speakers, and you play it and they just write you a check. Wow. You know, I mean it's it's just and to take it one step further, you know, we have between us and our reps, there's five sprinter vans on the road, okay, that are fully decked out. Did you see our uh, outdoor display in uh, Cedia? I did. Um, you see that? Yeah. I did. So, yeah. you know, they're pretty darn impressive. They're beautifully outfitted, lighting and audio. Um, but they're great. I was, I was on Facebook today, Franco, scrolling through my feed, and I saw one of your reps it was somewhere, but I watched the whole video on Facebook, and he was yes. – playing some beautiful acoustic uh, music, yeah. but he was playing it, I want to say through your line arrays and it, all, all of the speakers were arrayed in front of the Coastal Source branded van. It was a well done demo and it was being streamed on Facebook. It was brilliant marketing. Yeah, so we do that for dealers, we do it for trainings and we also do it for dealers customers. You know, we pull up that to someone's own personal yard and I think that's important. So we also have demo programs for someone for their showroom outside. Some people put it in their house uh, outside. That's good. But when you bring it to the, the lighting or the audio to their home, they know there's no smoke and mirrors. This is what I'm going to get. It's a completely different ball game. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a parallel. You didn't know us before we opened our design center, which is a very state of the art eight to ten million dollar showroom. OK, we had a very small showroom. It was 2000 square feet. We used to take customers to our job sites. So we had this brilliant idea. The showrooms worked out very nicely, but it was a huge investment. And we said people are going to come to us and we're going to show them everything. And it works. It is not the same, though, as us bringing our clients to another project where they know. And a lot of times our clients will come out and talk to them. That client invested in it. That client's happy. They're not, you know, I'm not a guinea pig. You know, we sell residential landscapes into the millions of dollars just in landscaping. Okay. Wow. If you lay out a plan and you show someone that that hasn't been experienced in that, they're like, are you kidding? You know, I wasn't born yesterday. But you bring them to a few people that have spent that kind of money and are happy with it. It's instant credibility. And as long as they have the bucks, their guard is down. So again, demoing in your client's property is the way to make sales. And, you know, uh, just another, another small thing is that, you know, a lot of people will do a demo, they'll produce a proposal and they'll email it to their customers. You know, you need to go visit your customer and produce and, and, and present that in person. People respect that. They see your investment. So a lot of times I find dealers are very anxious to do the job and then just send it out. You need to follow through because that little bit of a time investment of demoing at your customer's house Going to meet with them, listening to them, presenting them in person, your close ratio is going to be off the charts compared to not doing those things. It's brilliant. I, uh, we have Eddie. Uh, he posted, uh, I think Restrepo works for Coastal. <laughs> and uh, Restrepo's response was, uh, he's a happy dealer. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's pretty awesome. Franco, uh the, we are, uh, we're at the time and, okay. uh, this is, I've, I know I personally learned so much. Uh, this has been awesome. Um, how can the folks that are listening, uh, and or watching this, if they want to meet you or learn more about coastal source, what, what are the next steps they should take? So, you know, definitely go to our website, uh, con contact our customer service people. Uh, I'm very accessible. Uh, pretty much all our team is. So I'm primarily focused on R&D, but we have a full, you know, full team of experts on technical. Uh, we do, you know, we, we only sell direct to dealers. There is a dealer agreement. There is a demo requirement, uh, but we're happy to share those things and, and, and share whatever we know. And uh, I've got to give one more. You got one more shout out of love here. Uh, Jesse Silva says the stuff is simply amazing. Uh, so Thank great. you, Jesse. Great, great job, Jesse. Uh, Franco, it was a pleasure having you on Automation Unplugged, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the one and only Franco Desanio. And, uh, you know, I, it's been a lot of fun for me to have known Franco for so many years and to see, I mean, I knew he was big and big time down in the Keys with uh, Design Source. And uh, again, I, back in the day, I was his Crestron rep back in the early 2000s. 
And then to see Coastal Source get launched and launched with lighting and audio uh, from coast to coast, you know, as marketers, we're doing, you know, integrators marketing of, of you know, from websites, digital marketing. And there's no doubt that Coastal Source is one of the fastest growing and well-respected brands in the marketplace. And we, we know that. I'm willing to say that because I see dealers telling me it, it needs to be on my website. It needs to be on my social media. It needs to be in my blogs and because uh, they want to get the word out. Uh, so I, I thought that was, uh, it was, I, I've been chasing Franco for a little while to get him on the show. So I'm, I'm glad we, we made that happen. Uh, and so Franco, I see you down there. Don't, don't leave, but I'm going to sign off here. And then I, I'm going to wrap up with you. Um, but uh, folks, uh, yeah, I appreciate the good words. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you, Michael. And uh, uh, guys, I'm going to sign off. If you guys did not already know uh, one firefly, I haven't hit you guys with this one in a while. Um, we are on Instagram. Uh, we're, you know, we've been on Instagram for about a year and a half now or so. And, uh, if you don't already follow us on Instagram, please do so. Uh, just look up uh, one firefly LLC and you can find us. And a lot of time we'll put quotes from our, our automation on plug guest on there and lots of other, uh, you know, good bits of, uh, fun information. So for, be sure to, to go over there and follow us. And uh, on that note, uh, we've got a, a packed schedule of interviews into the coming months. Uh, and if you want to be on the show, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And or if you know someone that you want me to have on the show, don't be shy. Reach out and, and let me know who you want. Drop it into the comments. My team will be sure to capture that. And uh, on that note, uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. And uh, I will see you all next time. Thanks so much.